If you open a thermodynamics textbook, you will learn that the purpose of a refrigeration system is to maintain a cold region at a temperature below the temperature of its surroundings. This can be accomplished by employing a vapor compression refrigeration system. To understand how a vapor compression refrigeration system works, let's start with a substance we are familiar with, water. If we have a container of water on the stove and turn on the burner, we know intuitively that the temperature of the water will increase. Experiments have shown that water's boiling point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Two important things occur at the boiling point. First, the water begins to change states from liquid to vapor or steam. Second, the temperature of the water is constant while this change of state occurs. When I start teaching people about the refrigeration cycle, I like to start by talking about water. The reason I like to do that is because we're all very familiar with water. Um, we know that water boils, many people even know that water boils at 212 degrees. We're familiar with that concept of boiling, um, of, of water condensing on a cold glass of water. So it becomes a helpful starting point when um, explaining what's happening inside a refrigeration system when, when we're talking about now refrigerant boiling or evaporating. It turns out that stating that water's boiling point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit is not entirely accurate. Water's boiling point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but only at sea level, where the atmospheric pressure is 14.7 PSIA. This is an important fact. The boiling point of water, or any substance, is dependent on the pressure of the substance. In other words, when a substance is at its boiling point, the temperature and pressure of the substance are dependent. So what happens if we change the pressure of water and then apply heat? Experiments have shown that changing the pressure will have a direct effect on the boiling point. If you've ever been tasked with cooking a meal at a high elevation, you may already know instinctively that water boils differently. This can be attributed to the change in atmospheric pressure. Say you were staying in a cabin at an elevation of 6,000 feet above sea level. The atmospheric pressure at this elevation is 11.77 PSIA, which reduces the boiling point to 200.8 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that the water will begin boiling sooner. But if you are trying to cook something with the boiling water, it will take longer since the temperature is lower. What does this have to do with the refrigeration vapor compression cycle? If we go back to our original container of water and seal it, so that the pressure in the container can be manipulated with a compressor or a vacuum pump, we can adjust the boiling point of water accordingly. If we raise the pressure of the container to 20 PSIA, we can make the water boil at 228 degrees Fahrenheit. Lowering the pressure in the container to 2.5 PSIA can cause the water to boil at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. If we pull a hard vacuum on the container, by reducing the pressure to 0.12 PSIA, we can lower the boiling point of water down to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Imagine that, water boiling at a temperature that is only eight degrees Fahrenheit higher than the freezing point of water at sea level. Working through these examples has proven several points that are important for refrigeration. First, by changing the pressure of a substance, we can change its boiling point. Second, there is a range of boiling points for any given substance. Using water, even with a hard vacuum, the lowest boiling point we can realistically achieve is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Since most refrigeration applications require a temperature below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, water is not a great refrigerant choice. But ammonia, carbon dioxide, and other synthetic refrigerants have excellent properties for refrigeration applications. To help people understand the relationship uh, between the temperature and pressure of a substance when it's saturated, I like to talk about things we're familiar with. Everyone's probably seen a bottle of compressed air it's used to, to clean off your uh, computer keyboard or, or other uh, small nooks and crannies. Well, this is, this, the contents of this is under pressure. It's, a, it's a, pressurized, a pressurized gas, and if I were to release the pressure on this by holding down the trigger for a long time, this will become cold. Let me demonstrate. This is becoming very, very cold to the touch. 
Not sure if the video gives it, gives it justice, but now very cold, very cold to the touch. Why is that? Well, because it went from a high pressure down to a much lower pressure. During that process, the temperature lowered.